Hello and welcome to another edition of You Can Get There From Here. I'm Dr. Joel Moore, Chair of the Department of Communication and Digital Media Production at the University of Central Missouri, and it is my pleasure each week to get to visit with some of our alumni, talk to some folks in comm studies, some folks in digital media production, and even some members of our graduate program. We find out where they are today and how the program helped them get there. Today, our guest is Lucas Chapman. Lucas is a graduate of the UCM Communication Studies program, and he is now an on-site manager for Lead Point Business Solutions, Business Service, excuse me, in Plano, Texas. According to their website, Lead Point is a labor solutions company specializing in the waste, recycling, and manufacturing industries. Lucas, great to have you on the show today. Thank you for all the work you're doing with recycling and waste management. How are you doing? Yes, sir. Pleasure to be here, Joseph. Um, doing very good. How, uh, how are you doing? Doing all right, doing all right. So tell me a little bit about your job. On-site manager for Lead Point Business Solutions. What, what exactly is that and what do you do? So in the simplest terms, I'm in the waste management business. Um, I always joke about that kind of in a Tony Soprano way, but uh, <laughs> not, not, not quite like that. So what I do, um, I'm at a facility. It's called Republic Services. So they are a recycling facility. You'll see them all across America. It's kind of the same thing as waste management. If, if you're a fan of golf, you've heard of the waste management tournament, all that kind of stuff. So we're in the same business as them. And on my end, I work directly with that customer. I'm on the in the facility just about every day. Um, and I'm hiring, um, training, firing, doing kind of all the middle work uh, to provide services, to provide team members. Uh, to be able to sort through the recyclable goods. Um, so they they go through and they get all of the recyclable goods kind of in the morning, daytime, all that. They come to the facility, drop it off. It gets loaded up into, into what we call the drum, and it starts the whole cycling process. So from there, we just have to staff employees to be able to actually sort through that material. So we're able to get the good paper, good car- cardboard, uh, plastic, aluminum, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're trying to sort through that and kind of what puts, I would say, our company over the top compared to others. We're not a temp agency. These are full-time employees. Uh, after 90 days, they get full dental, you know, medical vision, all that. They get PTO, all that. So that's where, in terms of a staffing agency, there's this great unknown. But where lead points and what I'm very happy with is, you know, we've been able to provide these employees real jobs and real security instead of just, oh, you know, I could be here for two weeks and, you know, it gets hot in these facilities and it's it's not the cleanest job. So being able to provide a little more of a financial stability and, and real stability in terms of your health and all that and getting paid time off, that's a big deal. So. I basically am, am, am in charge of just making sure that everyone that we have at that facility um, is trained on what we're sorting through, what we're looking for, hazards, um, you know, logging first aids in case, you know, people get cuts, all that. So it's a, it's a big responsibility, but, you know, I work directly with uh, a really good team over at Republic every single day and have a good relationship with them. And I'm just, I'm very happy with what I do. A lot of our, our material, about 75% of it ends up uh, actually being recycled and going back to the cause of, you know, reusable energy, which, and reusable, just anything in general, which is huge, especially in our day and age. And um, there's more Republic and uh, waste management facilities popping up all over the, all, all over the place. Um, you know, I also do, I mean, I don't know how much you kind of want me to get into my spiel here. Don't go ahead. But, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I, I also get to do a lot of operation support. So I get to travel to other states, other locations, and help set up recycling facilities, you know, over there and help train on-site managers and, hey, this is kind of what we're looking for. This is what we're doing. This is the quote-unquote lead point way. 
Um, and a lot of that comes from honestly what I, what I did learn at, at UCM and just learning how to talk to people and communicate and being open and honest in your conversations. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a blessing. I've been able to go all the way, uh, to the Northeast, been in, uh, Massachusetts a good amount of times, been to Sarasota, Florida, all over basically Florida. Uh, two weeks ago, I was in Arkansas doing a startup for a company called Cards. And they now have the the newest, it's called Murphs. It's, uh, you know, where everything gets dumped. Essentially, it's a recycling facility. Um, but they have the newest facility in the entire United States. And it just opened. And three weeks ago, yeah, I was I was there doing the whole startup process, hiring the on-site manager, um, hiring all the employees, 18 different people, forklift drivers, heavy equipment operators. So it's been, it's been really cool. And then here in... Uh, a week and a half, I will be going to Santa Barbara for, for two straight weeks to do some training there. So, so you've uh, been a there's... little bit everywhere, all across the country. Yeah, you know, talking to you today reminds yeah. me I meant to bring my recycling in today, and I forgot it. It's sitting on my workbench back at home. What oh, what yeah. led you into your current position? Oh man, it's uh, you know, I'm I'm, I'm only 29, but I feel like I've had a crazy journey so far. So while I was at UCM. My junior year, I got an internship with Ronald McDonald House Charities in Kansas City. So I absolutely loved that. My passion will always be in nonprofit. The problem with nonprofit and anybody that tells you that, you know, money isn't important um, to your life and everything, they're just kind of lying to you. It's so, not important until you have to pay the bills, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So when I was 21, 22, I absolutely loved it. And the pay you're making at 21, 22. Yeah. You, you don't think it's, you know, too bad or you think, Oh, this is pretty cool. You know, I can get Chipotle a couple times a week. And, <laughs> um, but I, but I loved that, but I had an incredible boss there. Her name was April Hudson and she's still alive. I shouldn't say was, um, but uh, a great, great, great leader. And she kind of actually pointed me into the way of, hey, if you really want to end up making an impact in this field, you have to leave this field, come back so you can get into a position to where you're, you can actually kind of make the change that you want to see and do all those kind of things instead of just, it's really hard at that level. And it's, it's hard at a lot of places to kind of work from ground zero all the way up. So I left Ronald McDonald House, uh, got into accounts receivable, got into billing, all sorts of things, which... Uh, this is a shameless plug here. A great communications program and a communications degree can take you a long way because if you can talk to people and you have, you know, the gift of the gab, man, you can you can go all over the place. So I got into there and then just kind of gradually worked my way up and uh, got into right around COVID. I ended up getting into the metal industry. So basically sheet metal. Worked at a place called Kinmac Metals. Uh, down in the, what is that, the East Bottoms in Kansas City. Loved the job. It was fantastic. Uh, I met my wife, girlfriend at, around that time. Um, and she lived in Portland. She just kind of has more of a adventurous side that I now have. But she, <laughs> yeah, she, she wanted to move again. And, you know, I, since I was seven, eight years old, I always had this, this love for Texas. And, um, it's like, yeah, you know, I would love to move down there, but I just never had uh, the willpower to do it. And she said, all right, you know, we're going to not renew our lease. We're going to put in our notice. Let's just go. And I was like, okay. So uh, got in connections with our sister company that we had down there. Um, and we moved down here. I, I took a job down here and uh, worked there for about a year and a half. And I started doing some inventory and just doing some bigger roles and I really liked it, but I wanted uh, a little bit more of a challenge. And a lot of people, I would say my age or anywhere else, just kind of, you, know, you go on ZipRecruiter and Indeed, and you you know you start seeing these different salaries and you think, oh, I could probably do this. I could do this. I applied for a couple of jobs that at the time I wasn't sure if I was qualified for, to be honest with you. And um, got some callbacks. And this was one that it was close to where we lived. You know, it's a 10 minute commute for me, basically, which was fantastic. You know, my wife works in Plano. We live in Plano. It's 
Like I was like, oh, this would be perfect. I don't know hardly anything about recycling though. I always thought for basically my whole life, it has to be just a crock. You know, I just, that was kind of my assumption of it. And I applied and basically just, just through my interview and how I pre presented myself. And um, I gave a lot of credit to Terry and Conan for that. Um, <laughs> He'll but just being it. Yeah. I mean, he, great guy. If uh, I haven't talked to him in a long time, but I had a lot of jokes with him. He was very tough on me and, you know, I still have kind of the same personality that I had then, but I, you know, he's, he'll always be, you know, to me, probably my, my favorite professor and the person that made me realize, Hey, there's some things that I, I probably should tighten up on and get better at. So shout out to Terry. He's fantastic. Well, he, when I told him I was going to be interviewing you, he had some kind words to say about you. So it's good that there's oh. that, that good mutual respect there. So, you know, one of the things you talked about, you talk about the classes you had and help you with interviewing yep. and all of that. It's helped you with your nonverbal and your verbal communication, which is very, very important. You also yep. mentioned that you work with employees with a really wide age gap or age yep. gap. How, yep. how, how did your training prepare you for that? So on so in the interviewing class that I did with Terry, uh, that was the most like I always thought I was terrible at public speaking, and it, it really just kind of freaked me out talking to just people that honestly at that time like didn't look like me or didn't have the same interests that I had, and just being able to sit basically one on one with a person with your peers just you know sitting there watching taking notes about your conversations and. You know, you're either going to fold pretty quick or you're going to figure out a lot about, you know, how to read somebody and how to communicate with people. And then, you know, just everything that we did, it just it teaches you, hey, everybody kind of is the same, but, you know, surface level. Everybody kind of likes the same stuff. You like the same food. You like to laugh. You know, everybody likes to cry you know, at the right things. And, you know, everybody has something that they absolutely love. And so what I've found out just kind of throughout the years, and especially now, you know, I, I tell everybody this in the interview process or anything that I do now, I will talk to everybody the exact same way. I talk to my mom, I talk to you, I talk to my wife, talk to my cats, talk to my best friends, grandparents, I'll talk to you in the same tone. I'll treat you with nothing but respect. I mean, you could end up thinking I'm the biggest POS out there, but I will give you nothing but respect i will try to give my best effort to treat you on the same same level that i'm at i'm never going to talk up to you talk down to you i'm, I'm just going to talk to you at the at, at an even pace right so and that's helped me be able to communicate with my employees that i have that are late 50s early 60s that are that are still working and they're some of my best employees but you know you have to give a little bit of yourself you have to let them in on hey you know i got a wedding anniversary coming up or you know hey i had salmon and rice last night you know <laughs> or hey i'm i'm having pork and beans for dinner tonight you know just like basic level communications or you know hey the rangers won the world series what'd you think about that or you know cowboys aren't doing so well or you know whatever the case may be just talking to everybody just Instead of just, hey, you're a number for me, you're a statistic for me, I just need to fill this spot. You know, I, I, every single morning I do our safety meeting, I walk through, I dap everybody up. Hey, you know, how are we doing? How are we doing? Try to keep the energy going and talk to everybody the same way. And that's, that's the number one thing that I've found is just the most important thing. Because regardless of you know, if I'm talking to our COO or, or my boss, you know, they're a little older than me. They have you know, a little more quote unquote power. But I talk to them the exact same way. I, I, I talk to my wife. You know, I'm I'm not gonna walk into that situation and be intimidated because you're you have X amount of years on me or you you might have more knowledge than me on a couple things. It's you know, that person, they can teach you a lot of those things. That's knowledge that you'll learn over the years. I mean, you know, you have more years than me, but you're talking to me the same way that I would want somebody to talk to me or I would try to talk to somebody else. So just having that understanding that everybody, everybody wants that. Nobody wants somebody that's, all right, you know, screaming all the time or up and down and all over the place. You know, you want somebody that's cool, calm and collective and just gives you basically that respect. And if you're given that respect, you're going to get it back. So that's honestly, that's the main thing that I've learned in life is just 
it's very simple, but it's just, you know, give people respect, treat others the way you'd want to be treated. It's the same thing. Your, your mom or grandpa, grandma, you know, dad would tell you, your uncle would tell you when you're a kid, you know, when you're shaking somebody's hand, shake it like you mean it. You know, yeah. when you're talking to somebody, look them in the eye. It's, it's the simplest things, but that stuff goes so far. And it's, you know, you could use the pebble analogies of, you know, the little things add up into, you know, it's a, ends up being a big rock or a big boulder. So, or an avalanche, basically it's, it's just kind of do those little things and that ends up being a big thing. And that's what people remember. They remember the way that you treat them and the way you introduce yourself and the way you talk to them and the way you care about other people. And, you know, that's just, that's the stuff that really matters. Yeah. Just just be kind kind. and treat people right. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. There's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of very negative people in the world and, you know, negative things on the news and what, whenever you open your social feed or which that's a whole nother subject, but <laughs> we won't even go down it, that road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. W- w- whenever you get into these things, it's, you just see so much negative. And I think it, you know, when you're really talking to people, there's a lot less of that negativity. Um, so it's just, yeah, just be kind to people. And that's, that's great. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the best way you could go about life. Yeah. Well, you, you've talked some about your classes and things you took with, with Terry and with others and, you know, helping you build those verbal and nonverbal skills and, and, uh, helping you learn how to talk to other people. But in college, we talk an awful lot about, okay, you've got your classes, you know, you need to go to class, you need to learn those things, but then you need yep. to be involved so you can put it into practice. So when you were in college, what kind of activities were you involved in? You know, clubs and organizations, intramurals, uh, fraternity, you know, what, what have you, what, what did you get yourself involved with? So I did intramural. So I kind of had a, a different journey in college. I started at UCM. I loved it, had some personal issues, ended up going to Northwest Missouri state for one year. I realized very quickly, not the place for me. <laughs> I, I, so then I came back to UCM my junior and senior year. So I had, a bunch of friends from my freshman year and people that I knew that were in fraternities. I never, you know, never got into one, but I went to different frat stuff and um, yeah, just intramural basketball, football, all that kind of stuff. Anytime, you know, we had get togethers with, um, you know, different communication studies, people, I would always try to go to those, go to different study groups, um, just staying and involved. I go to the rec center all the time. It's honestly the rec center, that's still my favorite part about UCM. I mean, that thing is fantastic. It's nice. When I was, it's nice. Yeah. yeah. When I was there, I don't know if it's still in there, but there was Einstein bros in there. So yep. basically every single morning. Yeah. I, I come into school, I go get my Einstein bros, roll into class. I mean, it was, it was fantastic, but all that kind of stuff. I mean, it really is super important just being involved with, you know, going to plays and going to football games, going to basketball games, like just going out and supporting, you know, your other student body members, like that goes a long way. And, you know, the communications program honestly does a lot just in terms of getting involved with all that. Um, That's one thing I wish, honestly, I would have got involved with more while I was there, but just because I kind of was there, then I left and I came back. I kind of messed up with some of that, but yeah, I just... uh, I loved going to, you know, the Thursday night opening mule game. Like I love going to Saturday games. Um, that was honestly one of the best times, you know, the basketball team when I was there, they were rocking, they were great. So that was awesome going to those, but, you know, just going to as many games as possible and just, you know, getting to experience that snout out pride. It's, it's good. And just getting out and there's associated with other people, right? Yeah. And I mean, you meet a ton of different friends. You're able to, you know, quote unquote network because you never know what your classmates are going to end up doing or being. And so once again, that kind of goes to just be a kind person, be a nice person. And, you know, people will remember you. And are you still um, in contact with any of your classmates from college? Yeah, uh, actually, there's probably three or four that I'm I'm still very close with. Uh, my buddy, Austin Ely, you could reach out to him. He's a great guy. Uh, Ben Page, he lives probably 20 minutes away from here. You know, we do little hangouts every you know month or two, but he's got a couple kiddos now. So life's a little different there. It's 
you know, things Funny go how up that top happens, her. isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, we, we live 20 minutes away. He was my best, best buddy in college. And it's, it's just harder to get together and do those kind of, uh, kind of things like as you get older. So we try to get lunch, you know, as often as we can and, you know, Saturday mornings, you know, bike rides or whatever, but you know, I, life takes you in different places and it's tough to do all those kind of things is what, what you did when you were 20. So yeah. 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 And then, uh, yeah, I have a couple other really good friends, uh, that I still talk to almost on a daily basis. Yeah. You know, fantasy football is coming up. So a lot of those guys, you know, we're getting back together and doing our drafts. So yeah. Well, good luck this season. <laughs> Pro- probably need it. <laughs> All right. Well, I like to end the show every time with a couple pieces of advice because you've gone through the program. You're out yep. there, you're, you're doing it, you're putting it to work. Thank you, by the way, for all that's the guy who really cares about the environment, somebody who's taking care of the recycling. I really appreciate that. Those new Republic trucks that are got the arms coming out, pick up the trash can. Sometimes I just oh, yeah. sit at the window and watch that happen. It's really cool. But as you uh, as you're thinking back on your time, give me a piece of advice for a current UCM student, UCM communication studies student, and give me something that you would tell a potential somebody that's looking to go to college they're trying to figure out what they want to do and they're considering ucm piece of advice for each of them what would you say the to your first question i would say focus more on the degree and your classes just taking as much information from that as you can and really listen to what your professors are telling you so there's been a lot of very good success stories that have you know came from ucm but don't focus so much on, I have to get this degree because I want this job. Now, there's a lot of jobs that, you know, you have to get this specific degree to do that. But the, the great thing, I think, with communications is, I mean, I just said I'm, I'm 29 years old. I've been able to do nonprofit. I did billing, got into metal. Now I'm in, in recycling. And I'm barely, I'm not even 10 years out of out of college i'm barely 10 years out of high school so just take everything that the professors are telling you um because you guys know what you're talking about you know you have a, a wealth of knowledge and just build on that and don't focus too much on oh my gosh when i'm 22 years old i have to be doing this when i'm 24 i have to be doing this when you're gonna get out of college you might not have that dream job that you want but by God, you got a job, you're doing the thing, you got your degree, you're working your way up. You should never start from, you know, hey, I just got this and now I'm immediately right here because then you won't appreciate it when you have it. So just take that knowledge in and kind of embrace that that grind a little bit that comes from right when you get out of school. Man, it's a confusing place. Your parents don't want you living there anymore. <laughs> you know, you, you got to pay your own rent. All of a sudden, oh, hey, I have a $380 car note I got to pay. Oh, now I got my own insurance coming out. Like life throws a lot of haymakers at you. So just take that knowledge. And I promise you that if you really are bringing that in and you're trying to learn to the best of your ability, it'll pay off for you so much down the road. Because communic- like communications, I can, I can only speak on that, but communications, if you are good at it and you really focus on it, that will take you so far in life. People want people to be able to talk to them like in a, in a positive way. And if you know how to do that, if you kind of, if you build up that gift of the gab, man, it'll take you to so many different places in life where you might think, I don't know how in the hell I got here. But you know what? I'm here, and in the grand scheme of things, that was an awesome journey, and I'm so thankful for it. I'm thankful I had to work and and do these different things to get here. I wouldn't appreciate where I'm at now if I got here at 22, if I got here at 21. I I love how you say that. Uh, Appreciate the grind, because if you get your dream job right out of college, then what do you have to look forward to? Yeah, it's and it's not going to be your dream job for long because the the vast majority of people, you can think, man, this is my dream. You get it, and then you're always it's human nature. You're always going to want more. You're always going to want to do something else. You have to 
just, yeah, really just embrace that grind and get to that point to where, Hey, I've went through this job and that job and that boss. And I don't like that. I don't like how they did that. But now I'm at this point in my life to where I'm at peace with a lot of different things. And now I love the way I can, I can be in charge of other people. I love the way that I talk to people. You know, I love the way that this has worked out for me, but you have to get through that grind, which that's the only thing I ever get nervous about. I always say with younger people, um, knowing that I'm still fairly young, it's, it's surface level. It seems like that is kind of being taken out of society a little bit. The just, I know not everybody should want to just grind for everything, but it's so important. And I think that all just starts with really just mastering what you're studying in college and knowing the importance of communication. I mean, it's, it's important in work. You know, if you ever get married, it's huge. Yeah. You know, you know, kids, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's maybe the biggest life skill that you could ever have. Well, Lucas, I sure appreciate you being on today. You've got some great words of wisdom from those out there looking. Uh, I, I, I appreciate your, your passion for the not-for-profit, but what you're doing right now, man, it really matters. So thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for being here. Keep up the good work. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, Joe. Snouts out. Snouts out. And thanks all of you for tuning in today. Remember, you can catch every episode on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash UCMMN. You can also listen on Spotify. Special thanks to Jake Mager for creating our theme music. Again, this is Dr. Joe Moore reminding you, you can get there from here. Have a great day.